Welcome in everyone, my name's Crane Bramp, you're all Brainiacs, and this is TNP to Limitless 5, the largest modded pack on 1.18 currently available. Weighing in at over 400 mods and 1300 quests, it has beautiful biomes that are filled with plants and deep caves filled with just the ruddy flow of lava. Wildlife that roams the world both cute and cuddly, some decidedly less so. Dangerous ancient structures abound to both explore and loot and contend with their denizens. Foul dungeons filled with the fetid stench of rotten flesh, but with loot for the brave. A dangerous land for certain, but hope still springs in this land of chaos. People still build and thrive, and we, against all odds, may just find a place to call home. Welcome to TNP Limitless 5. Oh, in a nutshell. Day one, and it is amazing to be back in Minecraft. So, spawn looks pretty decent. We're in a forest. Uh, we have a problem. The entire spawn is an Illager encampment. Of course it is. Uh, anyway, I would like something more like Plains or something like that. It looks like South has some coastline down there. So let's skirt these guys and see what we can find in that direction. First, though, let's get our basics done. Some wood, a table, a pick, some cobble nearby. Hey, a bit of combat. And we're kitted in some basic stone gear. Noise. Now, down the side of the mountain, I found some living beza. I mean, some sheep. And also some melons, which should keep us in food for quite a while. Man, the terrain generation is beautiful in 1.18. They did such an amazing job. Have been... Finishing off a couple of larger 1.12 mod packs in my spare time and haven't had a lot of time to play 1.18. Uh, and you know what? Comment below if you'd like to see some older packs done in this in a nutshell style. And uh, while we're admiring the landscape here, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to drop by, hang out, watch the vid, and spend some time with the community. We'd appreciate a like and subscribe, and uh, you know, it really helps out the channel and the vid. And uh, yeah... Uh, apparently while we were talking, a typhoon rolled in while I'm exploring, but hark through the trees, what pray it be? Shelter? A place to call home? <sighs> or a bitter disappointment? Die, foul fiends, away from my island! With them gone, it was time for a bit of redecorating, search the treasure chest, and organize. And with that, the day is done. Not a bad freaking start. Day two, and it is time to get settled in and get that early game grind going. Cleared off some of the island, uh, picked up seeds from the grass, grabbed some mystical flowers for when we start up with Batania, some wood, claimed all my initial quest rewards, and some basic storage. The rest of the week was spent in a veritable cornucopia of activities as I worked on setting up a solid foundation while trying not to get too distracted uh, did some landscape leveling in preparation for farming, laid down a quick wheat farm for bread, a uh, bit of mining, exploring a cave on the island, also found a dungeon, which I visited a couple of times for some pretty incredible loot that I completely forgot about until weeks later. Uh, got my fence up, uh, kept uh, grinding for more resources, made my first infinity pool, laid out several farm plots so that we could get some food going, uh, some lighting so that monsters don't harass me, and our first plants other than wheat are out. And first week is done, we are looking good. Week two opens up with digging a mine shaft. Fun. Always a pain in the butt, but if you get it done early, this gives you a bunch of cobble and other materials as a byproduct. You gotta do mining anyway. This pack has FTP Ultimine, which is just a variation of the vein mining mod. However, it does shaped excavation also. So I can dig through by three tunnels and even stairs, which are quick and simple. Once I was down around Y16, I went ahead and did a long tunnel to branch mining off of. Found a ton of granite and diorite, which turns into polished diorite and polished granite without having to smelt them. It makes great floors, uh, side decoration materials, and stuff like that. This is also a great time to start stockpiling early game resources. So I grabbed some trees, found a lava pond, which will come in handy later, and a dungeon watchtower, which I was all about with my mighty stone sword. Since I had plenty of torches, it was easy enough to fight the few things that spawned and then light up everything else. And man, was there some loot. Loot, loot, and more loot. Even randomly, I found a secret room with an enchanting table, lots of bookcases, and more. Man, I gotta keep my eye out for more of these. And more loot, loot, loot. 
and just a little bit more loot. <laughs> so this threw my old schedule off, but it was so worth two days of hauling loot out of this place. And finally, back to the mines, to mine, mine, mine. And wait, a, a goblin trader? Hi there, what have you got? What, 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 32 cobble for an emerald? Um, don't go anywhere. Almost a full stack of emeralds. Holy shiitake mushroom, Batman. All right, back to the mines. Now I not only need to mine, but the goblin traders change everything. They only can provide apparently unlimited materials for cobble, but they also double smelt ores for you. Oh, we're mining, baby. And although it sounds boring, the rest of the week was mine all night and then during the day gather resources like trees and food. Amazingly, I ran across a slime island that had generated right on the ground. Yes, please. That was immediately dispatched, slime and everything harvested, and even grabbed my shears and got some slimy grass. Tended the garden, uh, getting seeds, replanting, working towards full crops. Our food was building really nicely. Next week, I'm planning on getting into some cooking with blockheads, setting up our kitchen, and more. As I mined, I turned cobble into compressed cobble, set up a small area to make stone pickaxes, some storage, kept smelting. Things were proceeding along quite nicely. Also discovered a giant villager castle with traders and tons of loot chests that the villagers didn't seem to mind me helping myself to. Also a few lanterns so they don't have to make them. Shh, they don't need light. <laughs> but this will serve us well all through the game, hopefully, with traders. I did forget to check and see if they have a librarian, but I'm really hoping that they do. I'll have to go back. Made a lead and brought in a few sheep so that I'd have some wool production without having to run all over the countryside. We'll work on cows and other stuff when we get to automation. And now that I feel like we have a proper foundation, and because we're literally bursting at the seams storage-wise, it's time to build our first big base, set up proper storage, and start on our modded journey. Also, about this time I realized I have over a stack of emeralds and an opportunity to refill a stack at a time with the goblin trader, so... Dun, 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 emerald tools and full emerald armor. Ah, look at that. Well, just look at that glory. So a little bit of surveying later, I decided to do a base for the building that's 27 by 51. That gives us tons of floor space per floor, and we can build straight up for expansion. We're still going to have to have some other buildings for like bees and stuff, but we'll work on that. At the moment, it'll just be a big rectangle, but we'll do some exterior decorating later and spice it up. I've been smelting cobble into stone, making stone bricks, tons of polished diorite, andesite, and granite for interior decoration so we can at least get that part done. The mod pack has builder's wands, two different types in fact, and these save me so much time. Threw a few windows in, uh, got the floors and the ceiling done, and we have our first floor of our base. Took some time, leveled out some more of the island to expand our farming and also have a botania and tree farm area. Finished off the week with a bit more mining, another goblin trader, and watch the sun set on a grateful island. Things were starting to come together in week three. Continued mining through the nights and working during the day, just stacking those resources. Also gathered a metric crap ton of wood for storage drawers, kept tending our crops, and got our first mystical agriculture plants in the ground doing inferium. Then, storage time. Drawers, drawers, and even more drawers. In fact, just a whole wall of drawers. And why would you build drawers other than to organize? So there went a couple of hours sorting everything into categories and sections and colors. We made a drawer controller and our first storage is done. Found yet another watchtower dungeon, fought it, lit it up, and again spent two days hauling all the loot out. Man, it was amazing. We're talking loot, loot, loot. Oh my god, even more loot, including wild stuff like a Vortex Cannon and even a high-level Spellstone from Enigmatic Legacy. When am I going to sit down and go through all this wild loot? Note that I would never, ever stick all of this crazy loot in chests, forget about it, and not look at it for months. Never. Absolutely not. No way. I just wanted to say that. Out wandering around, I got attacked by some goblins hiding in the bushes. Let me say that again. Goblins hiding in the bushes. Regardless, get wrecked, bitches. How dare you come out? Next, I built a small room with some drawers for Britannia storage. We'll use this area out front to set up all our mana pools and so on. 
Also made a bit of floral fertilizer, made some pure daisies, and got our living stone and living wood production up and running. Noise. Working on lighting up the island seemed like a good idea after I got assaulted several times out at night. Get away from me! The rest of the week was a blur. Planting and harvesting trees, collecting living wood and stone, building up a stock of that. Even more mining was on the menu, but we're going deeper. Found an absolutely huge cavern system, fought off a few mobs. Oh, oh, wait. No, no, that's not a few. Get, get uh, die, get, what you, you want some too? Get some. And man, ores absolutely everywhere. Note that this pack does have a mining dimension, but the portal block requires four blocks of gold, and I just don't have that to spare. Maybe now? Uh, found a sweet lava pool. It sounds like a great time to grab that obsidian, and yeah, I'm not going to argue with two stacks of obsidian. Freaking score. Obsidian means a nether portal, which means lots of ores, nether material, and apparently lots of combat since mining the ores pisses off the pigmen. Great galloping geodesic geostorms. That is a lot of piggies. Back, back. Capped off the week exploring the nether and spent two and a half more days trying to find a nether fortress. But survey said... And that's pretty much my life. Man, it does not feel like we're in week four and I feel behind. But I'm going to assume that's because I've spent like four or five of those days hauling loot back to the base from dungeons. And a couple, maybe three full days looking in vain for another fortress. Still haven't found one. Anyway, the week opens up with tree farming, lots of farming and mining, and the ever-present smelting. I got some immersive engineering set up, a coke oven, blast furnace, an alloy kiln to get cold coke, creosote oil, steel, and made some brass since we've got a ton of copper. Went on and knocked out the kitchen, moved the bed into the main base, set up an infinity pool inside, organized all of our food into the kitchen, and wow, it has been a month. So, thank you guys for being here for week one. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you'll get the notification for week two. And I'll see you where? On the other side.